I welcome you all uh, to the 15th lecture of the course titled Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. So this is the third lecture of module 5 and overall it is 15th lecture. Uh, so the today's lecture is uh, titled as uh, Coping with Social Support. So how social support can act as a coping strategy. So before we talk about today's lecture, let us uh, have a brief recap of the last lecture. Uh, that is lecture 14. So in the last lecture, uh, we have discussed mental ways of coping. So in, in, in the last few lectures in the series of lecture, we have we are discussing about coping strategies, particularly constructive coping strategies. So we started talking with, you know, physical ways of coping, uh, such as you know, relaxation exercise uh, you know, and physical exercises. Uh, then we talked in the last lecture mental ways of coping how can we cope with the stress using or addressing the issues of the thought processes so our thought influences our emotions and emotion influences our thoughts so there is a bi-directional relationship we have discussed in the last lecture uh, so directly changing emotions generally is very difficult so when we are talk about stress and anxiety you know, they have a lot of emotional consequences associated with them uh, so Interven intervention at the thought level by changing thought processes we can change our emotions uh, so that was the idea of mental ways of coping how can we address stress or cope with the stress by changing our thoughts or addressing our thought processes and we have seen generally we are human beings are imperfect information processor uh, with the idea that we generally don't process information especially related to ourselves our futures about other people and world in general uh, we don't process very factually information no? we are not very objective in most of the interpretation processes uh, so a lot of biases and a lot of uh, belief system are belief system influences our interpretation of a situation and many times we develop dysfunctional and distorted thinking processes you know from our childhood and it keeps you know throughout our it remains throughout our life and uh, in that context, we have discussed one theory called as ABC theory proposed by Albert Ellis, who is one of the you know, big name in psychology, particularly in the field of psychotherapy. And uh, he tried to explain using ABC model, how these thoughts and emotion influence each other. So in that context, A is basically activating event, B is belief system and C is consequences. So generally we think uh, uh, as a layman perspective you know we think that events causes emotional consequences so if something bad happens we feel bad uh, but according to Ellis, it is not the event that actually causes the consequences but something that is the belief system in between event and the consequences they actually causes con uh, you know, emotional consequences so how do how we think about the event that happens that actually causes emotional reactions so activating events or events a activates certain belief system belief structure which are mostly unconscious and automatic so something bad happens and you say you know my life is doomed or i will not be able to do anything so this kind of thought starts so these are belief systems and they ultimately cause a c which is consequences emotional consequences it could be anxiety depression whatever it is so that is the model uh, you know uh, that we try to understand and in that context you know we have un tried to understood understand uh, that uh, most of the psychological disturbances or emotional disturbances are actually associated with you know irrational thoughts or catastrophic thoughts uh, and we try to understand irrational thoughts are basically illogical thoughts uh, which distorts reality which are not actually factual they are they are kind of distortion of reality and uh, they cause us many negative emotional consequences uh, they hinders us to reach our goals and you know the kind of you know stimulate self-defeating behaviors so for example you know some peop many people you know has many uh, intri assumptions that they believe in such as you know um, you know all the significant people should always you know uh, give me love and affection all the time so we we have all these expectations you now which are irrational you know so 
people you cannot be loved by all the people around you all the time it is simply not possible because people are different they have their different taste and people mood also changes but if you expect you no know, significant people around you should all, always give you love and you know approval all the time then you are bound to feel de- dejected and experience negative emotions so we have so so many such negative you know irrational thoughts that actually influences our emotions exaggerates our emotions uh, so we tried to di- discuss diverse aspects of irrational thoughts uh, we gave you know with so many examples we tried to understand in the last class then in the end we tried to uh, discuss how to reduce this irrational thoughts because it is you know, uh, generally not possible to com- completely eradicate such thoughts but we can reduce their frequencies and numbers you know uh, so in that context we discuss there are two important steps one is detection of these thoughts are very important you know? uh, first we need to understand that such thoughts are there and they are kind of creating disturbances so emotional disturbances so the idea is whenever you get emotionally disturbed ask yourself why am i getting disturbed so from emotions you trace back your thoughts and you detect your thoughts from your self talk the talking that you do to yourself and uh, uh, then the second step is dispute using diverse questions that we have discussed in the last class we can dispute those thoughts and replace them with more healthy thoughts so these are some of the important concepts that we have discussed in the last lecture uh, primarily uh, about mental ways of coping or coping by changing our thought processes so today we'll talk about coping with social support so this is also very important uh, how to deal with stressful circumstances using social support or people uh, getting support from other people so uh, in that con- in this lecture we will uh, explain or discuss various concepts such as i will talk about different forms of social support we will talk about effects of social support on our health and well being uh, we will talk about stress moderation by social support and what is the mechanisms of that and uh, at at the end we will discuss uh, social network analysis using a particular model called as uh, social convoy model so let's start so human beings uh, we are generally called as social animals with the idea that you know uh, we we cannot we don't stay alone or isolated ways uh, we always live in a social situations where we constantly bond with other people around us you know so that is the idea of social animal so we are all programmed for bonding with other other human beings you know uh, this is a fundamental need and motivation uh, that we have a sense of or need to belong to a uh, you know social structure need to belong to family need to belong to a community need to belong to a society a nation etc so this is a fundamental need that we want to we are programmed to bond with other people because uh, this is very important for our you know emotional well being as well as for the survival also uh, because you know it has an evolutionary function also because without you know support from other pe- other people in the group uh, we it will be very difficult for us to survive alone so there is a survival value in social bonding and there is an emotional value to it because people support us during the time of crisis uh, so they give us also emotional and various kinds of support so this is one thing that remains throughout from childhood to old age you know this one need is a constant need that we want to constantly bond with other people so that is the meaning of you know that particular you know the concept of social support is a reflection of that uh, basic need and motivation so uh, social support can be defined as information from others uh, that one is loved and cared for esteemed and valued and part of a network of communication and mutual obligations uh so this is one of the ways of technically you uh, know way a technical way of defining social support the idea is that you know we perceive social support when you know we feel that you know uh, that 
in a network of people you are kind of valued you are loved you are cared uh, and you are a part of a network of communication and mutual obligation so other people support you 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 also sub- give re- support in response to that so this is how you know uh, when we have social support network uh, this is the kind of perception and feeling that we experience that you are loved and cared and valued in a network of communication with other people and obviously there is a mutual obligation you know oh, another way of looking at social support is you know it can be thought of as a soothing impact of friends family and acquaintances so social support the idea is used always in the sense of positive sense in the sense that you know somebody support means somebody is helping you so you have a soothing effect in terms of positive effect from friends acquaintances family members so they are all kind of you know supporting you so that is the idea of social support so uh, the need for a uh, stable and strong social relationships with other is a very powerful pervasive and fundamental motivation as we have said no it's a very powerful motivation we all want to connect with people the sense of connection is very important and our quality of life our sense of health and well being largely depends on this quality of this connection with other people what what is your quality or quality of social relationship with other people plays very important role in our psychological health in physical health we'll see some of these research findings uh, so it it largely determines the quality of our life it helps us to establish a network of close caring individuals uh, who can provide social support in the time of distress sorrow and fear and obviously in general it is very important and particularly it is important at the time of distress crisis in life then we really understand the value of other people you know because they kind of stand with you and support you during the time of crisis uh social support is particularly important personal resource because it helps provide access to further resources beyond those you already possess yourself so it is important because you know as an individual i may have certain resources to deal with a situation you know let's say uh, i need money to deal with certain crisis in my life you know so i have a certain amount of money uh, which is limited but for example there is a crisis in your life where you need lot of you know monetary support but your own monetary uh, whatever money that you have is not sufficient so somebody in your social network lends you money or helps you at that time so your resources get enhanced so whatever you have is enhanced by other people's resources so it is important in that connection so it enhances our resources so it could be monetary resource it could be intellectual resource whatever it is whatever is required it may be informational resource so you we all as an individual have many limitations so when we get support from other individuals our resources our abilities get enhanced so we use their resources and it becomes ours at the time of crisis so uh uh so there can be se- several uh, you know source uh, resource sources of social support uh, for example we get support from our parents from family members from friends from relatives from various loved ones around us you know so they are all sources of social support you know uh, some people may have you know larger network they may have more number of people in their network some people may have less number so it depends on the individual you know lifestyle and uh, his you know his friend circles etc uh, so all these people can give you you know different type of uh, social uh, support uh, sometimes even pets can be an important uh, source of social support because you know pets uh, such as you know we all love pets it could be you know a dog it could be a cat whatever it is uh, so many time you know people nowadays uh, you know uh, because of the shrinking you know social uh, support network uh because of the lifestyle we are not really too much connected with people around us so in that context many time people find it you know having a pet in your home can give a very a very important emotional support 
so people play with pet you know they kind of you know love them and you know they reciprocate in so many ways the love and affection they get so having a pet at your home uh, many time can be an important you know emotional source of emotional support so pets can be also source of support particularly you know you know hum- relationship of individuals or people can be complicated in that context relationship with the pets are much simpler and you know could be uh, very effective in many context so uh, this whole uh, the concept of social support coping with the social support uh, is so important that you know social isolation lot of research shows that you know social isolation for some reason sometimes people go into isolation when they get depressed or something you know? or social su- isolation can lead to many negative consequences uh, it may lead to depression it may lead to you know suicidal tendencies anxiety and so many other negative emotional consequences so from that we can understand how important it is that you have a good support network uh, because isolation can have uh, you know, many negative consequences no social support can be of different forms or different types so let us see uh, some of the different types of uh, social support so social support can take different forms such as tangible support informational support emotional support and sometime invisible support is also discussed so let us see what are this uh, you know types of social support tangible support by the name it is very clear that you know when somebody helps you with some tangible resources uh, such as material uh, resources it could be some kind of financial support it could be support with some services or some goods somebody give you some mat- some material support you know it could be money it could be some material some s- stuff or some kind of services you know uh, that is required for you so all these are called as tangible social support support that you get in terms of material support tangible more concrete support uh so second type of social support uh, is called as informational support so sometimes we get support in terms of information so you need some information about something let's say you no know, uh, you are in a crisis and you don't know what to do so somebody tells you do like this do like that so this is an informational support it could be in the form of giving some information it it could be in the form of giving some advice suggestions or uh, during some difficult time or stressful times so many people you know uh, many time we don't know what to do in a certain situation so you we ask somebody who is more ex- has more expertise in a, in in those areas and they may give us in help us to give information about what to do in those situations so those are called as informational support and then comes emotional support Uh, which is you know, more obvious and uh, the most of the time we are aware about it uh, that you know somebody you know supports you during the time of crisis by you know talking to you or taking some action so that you feel cared about you you feel understood you feel affirmed at that situation uh, so emotional support include empathy caring love and trust so somebody comes to you during the time of crisis and you know, listens to you your problem and gives you some you know words of love and affection so these are all emotional support and they may be very important during the time of crisis uh so another type of support it's may include other three type but it is more different in terms of approach which is called as invisible support so, so idea is somebody may give you support in an invisible way that the recipient may not be aware about it you know so that is called as you know invisible support and uh, basically receiving help from others but the recipient is unaware about it so in a hidden way you support somebody so that person may not be aware that you have supported that person so it could be in a simple thing or it could be in a very you know kind of uh, complex situations also for example no when you're let's say 
when your spouse is not at home you clean the house or do something and uh, your spouse may not be aware but at least it is helping in certain ways so at that time that person was not there to witness you did something and that helped the other person so this kind of help is most likely to benefit the recipient you know the research shows you know such kind of help is also very beneficial particularly you know there may be costs involved in other type of support especially when somebody gives you some other type of support there may be some cost involved in it in certain situation so because somebody is helping you you may have to do something in return so there may be some cost involved in it or sometimes when a person uh, is receiving help the recipient feels helpless that i need to get support from another person so those complications will not be there in an invisible support system so many time it may be you know very beneficial also so let us you know very briefly uh, you know draw try to understand this three type uh, four types of support just i will try to write it here so uh, social support so it can be of primarily three types but it can be we can use add the fourth one also so it could be tangible material support could be informational support <clears throat> in the form of advice suggestions it could be emotional and caring love trust empathy it could be invisible also sometime so this could be four types of social support so tangible is material support money giving material etc informational is advice suggestions emotional is about caring trusting listening to somebody active listening invisible support is when the recipient is not really aware about support so indirectly you are supporting somebody so this could be uh, four types of social uh, support so just as we uh, sometimes need different types of support some people are better at providing one kind of support than other so so depending on the situation and the life crisis sometimes we need uh, one particular kind of support in a particular situation and may not need other kind of support and in our social network some people are better at giving some one kind of support and other people are giving you know, better at giving other kind of support so you might notice that some people are very good with giving material support so some people are very resourceful materially in the material sense so if you need money and other thing you know in your network this person can help me with money so so there can be other people who are very empathetic and you know whenever you need emotional support you just go to them you know because they they have the skills to listen to you and giving you you know sim Oh, empathy and you know uh, trust and loving and caring relationship some people are good at it uh, 
some people may be good at giving informational support because you know they have you know a lot of net networks and connections they can they are know for what to do where to go and uh, whenever you require you just ask them so in different situation we mean we may need different kinds of support and uh, we uh, need to approach those kind of people who can give that particular specific kind of support some people may be good at giving you know two three kind of support so all kinds of people are there so social support is beneficial when there is a match between what you need and what one you received from the network so that matching is very important so if you uh, need a tangible support but other person is giving emotional support it may not work at that time you know it is okay it may be rel uh, relieve you with some distress but you know at that time you need tangible support you need some monetary support but you approach that person and he is giving you kind of emotional support so it may not be that beneficial so whenever you need particular kind of support uh, there has to be match with you know that kind of person who can give you that kind of resources so that uh, that is also very important in terms of effective uh, support <coughs> so let us see some of the research findings in the context of social support you know what are the findings uh, that research shows are associated with the benefits of social support so social support can be a good source of coping during the stress so we have been already talking about especially during the time of crisis uh, social support is very important for example you know there is a crisis and you know there is a i have a friend who can help me out so your all the stress will be relieved automatically immediately simply because you know i the, the, my friend is uh, will be able to help me out so that is the impact of support and uh, let's say you are in a crisis and you cannot see anybody who can help you out so your stress will remain you know for a longer time because you don't know how to what to do with that situation because nobody is there to help you out so you will experience chronic stress and it will it will have negative impact so people with high social support experience less stress and cope more successfully which is very obvious thing uh, so different types of social support such as you know emotional tangible and informational support were found to lower blood pressure blood pressure when individuals are faced with short term stressors so research also shows that the physiological level we'll see some other findings also uh, it has an impact you know, at the physiological level also because you know it relieves your stress and automatically it you know has a you know facilitative or positive impact on your physiological level also in terms of you know whatever the negative impact that stress has it relieves those negative impact including such as you know blood pressure you know if your blood pressure increases it will lower it down so for example in a classic study uh, which was done you know quite you know in the few um, decades back so in 1979 by barkman and sim on a sample of about 7000 adults 6928 adults uh, in california where they followed this sample for 9 years so these are called as longitudinal study longitudinal study basically means a particular group of people are followed for over a period of time and then you see the impact of some intervention and what is happening to them for a certain period of time so that you can see whether really there is a impact of a particular thing or not so these are called as longitudinal study uh, so it is very uh, this such studies are very important in terms of really finding out whether really there are some impact or not so so this sample of people were uh, you know followed over a 9 years of period and they found that and obviously there are many parameters who are recorded uh, you know from these samples you know their social network size of social network quality of social network and uh, various you know health related outcomes different measures were taken with certain interval of time throughout this 9 year of period 
so after the uh, conclusion of the study you know they found that compared to those with most social um, contacts isolated men and women so those who had less social support network so mostly they were kind of experiencing social isolation so socially isolated men and women were kind of respectively 2.3 to 2.8 times more likely to die even after controlling for variety of other health related variables such as smoking alcohol consumption self reported health all these things were controlled so so their impact was kind of separated and then only the impact of social support was looked at uh so even after controlling all these other health related variables it was found that you know socially isolated men and women are more likely to experience you know more likely to you know die or see their mor- mortality kind of likelihood of mortality increases uh, so that doesn't mean that people will die only it indicates that you know they are more likely to experience or you know Uh, or die as compared to other people simply because they have more supportive network and their stress experiences and health related things will be much lower as compared to other people so that indirectly may influence their mortality rate so in another meta analysis of 148 studies so meta analysis is basically means you know whenever there are many studies conducted in a particular area of research so there are so many studies and then generally you know we don't know where the findings are going so people do meta analysis with the idea they do analysis of the analysis so when so many studies are there they analyze the findings of all these studies together and see the trends in those areas so such meta analysis was conducted on 148 studies that were conducted uh, between 1982 to 2007 involving about over 3 lakhs of participants in those studies and they found that stronger social relationship have a 50% greater likelihood of survival compared to those with weak and insufficient social relationship so this also a meta analysis also indicates that you know social support net you know network can influence you know uh, mortality rate or survival you know it increases the chances of survival across diverse studies studies have also shown that higher social support is linked to better survival rates following cardiovascular disorder so after chronic diseases also if you have better social support network your chances of survival increases simply because of you know you will less likely to experience stress and other things so there is a comfort and soothing relationship people are there to help you out so that mentally helps you and supports you uh, so in the chronic stress such as you know cardiovascular disorder breast cancer hiv infection and so on so in various contexts uh, the benefits have been reported by various studies so uh, let us see some of the biological pathways of social support in fact you know uh, social support can influence our biological mechanisms also simply because it influences our stress experience and stress is very strongly connected to our biological uh, influence which we have uh, explained in detailed in you know past lecture uh, where you know we have discussed the biology of stress in detail so social support has been found to have beneficial eff- effects on cardiovascular endocrine and immune system so you know, all this uh, you know social support at least indicates that you know it has a beneficial impact on cardiovascular system uh, which is related to you know your blood pressure and other thing endocrine system which is related to release of various hormones uh, immune system is related to your protection of your body so it has a positive impact in all these dimensions uh it helps to slow down or reduce the physiological and neuroendocrine response to stress so stress whatever the negative impact that is done by stress on endocrine and physiological system uh, 
social supports kinds of slows it down it does has an counter effect to that uh, social support has also been linked to boosting immune system especially among people who are experiencing stress so stress generally reduces immune system we have seen the detailed of such you know, in one whole lecture on stress and immune system uh, so there we have you know, tried to see you know that you know stressful experiences you know has hampers our particularly the chronic stress uh, negatively influences our immune system you know uh, so social support kind of you know uh, reduces the in influence of stress and enhances the immune system so when stress is removed uh, that also has a facilitative or beneficial impact on our immune system also it is also linked to uh, reduce blood pressure for people performing stressful tasks so it also reduces blood pressure especially uh, for people with hypertension social support also facilitates coping and health outcomes by having beneficial physiological effects so we have seen so many physiological effects can be responsible for its uh, beneficial impact on our health furthermore uh, uh, social support is also may lead to better health outcomes not only through physiological impact but also it by influencing our behavior so people if there are close people around us they also help us to you know engage in hel healthy behaviors such as you know taking healthy diets doing regular exercises you know stop smoking and maybe you know uh, following you know medical prescriptions and so many things so people around us actually they kind of motivate us to engage in healthy behaviors especially your near and dear ones uh, mostly people are not on their own they will not do a lot of healthy behaviors but you know people if, if there are you know people who care for you they will always constantly tell you to do you know healthy behaviors so social support can indirectly influence our health outcomes by influencing our health behaviors so if you show it diagrammatically uh, we can uh, show it like this so so it may have two pathways one is obviously biological effects uh, which uh, may include uh, no, cardiovascular so social support has facilitative or positive impact on all these biological uh, systems such as cardiovascular endocrine and immune system and also it may influence our health behaviors uh, which may include you know healthy diets exercise etc so social support may promote this kind of healthy behaviors uh, which ultimately lead to uh, positive health outcomes So this could be the mechanisms of how social support can influence you know, our health outcomes. It could be by influencing our biological systems or through influencing our health behaviors.
uh, so how uh, social support you know moderate stressful reactions what is the mechanisms of by which or what are the you know, research findings associated with it so there are two hypotheses uh, generally that uh, we can see in the literature of social support uh, which have been uh, you know, explored to understand the role of social support in moderating the effects of stress so effect of stress how it is influenced by social support how it is reduced by it what is the what are the uh, you know, ways of uh, how it influences that so there are two hypotheses involved in it now, one is called as direct effect hypothesis which suggests that you know uh, it predicts that the social support is generally beneficial in all the times so both stressful non stressful time social support itself is beneficial in all circumstances you know? so it is good for general well being so this is called as direct effect hypothesis there is another hypothesis which is called as buffering hypothesis uh, which suggests that uh, it predicts that social support is primarily beneficial during the period of high stress so it is most important or more important or beneficial uh, during the time of uh, high stress and crisis in life so according to this hypothesis social support acts as a buffer or protective layer or resource uh, that mitigates the negative effect of stress during the time of high stress so during the high stress particularly the social support is much more important or it plays a much more important role by buffering the impact of stress so buffer basically means it's kinds of act as a protective layer between you and the stress so stress cannot directly impact you so there is a layer in between you know so uh, just like you know in uh, all the cars you have you know buffer buffer springs so whenever the car goes and there is you know when the road is not you uh, know <clears throat> there are you know holes in roads or there are problems in the road you don't get all the jugs from the road to to you, you know so there is a buffer spring that absorbs lot of you know strain from the road so similarly social support is like a buffer that kinds of acts as a protective layer so that all all the influence of stress is not coming directly to you it is kind of absorbed by it so that is the meaning of buffering hypothesis so both the hypothesis were generally supported by the research so in general also it is beneficial uh, for your well being and particularly during the time of high stress also uh, social support plays very important role so basically you know uh, in the context of stress uh, we can write it like this one is called as direct effect so it pro social support protects and promotes well being at all times not just only under high stress and buffer effect says so these are two hypotheses and uh, generally research shows both are correct depending on the situation and you uh, know uh, many factors so both can be uh, both has received empirical evidences 
So let us uh, now do the social support network analysis using uh, something called as a convoy model. So convoy basically means uh, uh, group of people. So this this is a model called social convoy model. Uh, it was developed by Tony Antonoxi and uh, Robert Kahn at the University of Michigan in 1980. So they uh, basically says convoy basically means uh, represents a group of people who move together. No? So that is so any group of people when they move together, we call that it's a convoy of people. So similarly, uh, you know, in our life also uh, that we are all surrounded by many people throughout our life. And there are many other people who kinds of moves with us throughout our life. So they represents a convoy, a social convoy in our life. So we are not alone in our life. So there are many people who moves with us throughout our life. They represent a convoy uh, in our life. So according to convoy model, individuals are surrounded by supportive others. So who move with them throughout their life course. So we have many supportive people around us who moves with us in our lives, journey of our life. So they are our convoys. And these relationships vary in their closeness, uh, in their quality and in their function. So obviously there are many people uh, in our network. Some people are closer to us. Some people are not so close to us. Uh, some people, you know, the quality of relationship with some people is much better as compared to someone else. And people also differ in their function. So we may be, you know, connected to somebody because of our you know, jobs, uh, job in a particular organization. Uh, some people are connected with us biologically, so they also differ in their functions and what they do in our life. Uh, so uh, the, con the pe convoy, who uh, people who are represented in the convoy or people who are in our network, they vary in their functions, in their quality, uh, in their closeness. So convoy measures involve placing close and important individuals into three concentric circles so basically it's kind of uh, it helps us to represent the complex social relationships in our network using concentric circles uh, which represents people who are very close who are closer and who are closest uh, so it is a simple way of representing uh, complex human relationships for example uh, it can be shown like this So let's say, uh, so you are here. So there is a first circle around you is called as inner circle. Then we have a middle circle. Then we have an outer circle. So you are here. So your inner circle represents people. So closest friends and family members. Inner circles, people who are closest to you. Then comes the middle circle. So middle circle represent people who are not as close as your as the people in your inner circle, but they are still very important in your life. So we may make distinction between you know best friends and friends. So maybe people in the middle circle are you know friends. And inner circle are kind of closest people, you know, best friends and those kind of things. Then comes the outer circle. Who people who are not very close they are less close uh, no, but still uh, part of your life
maybe some people in your organization where you know, are placed in a job so there are people who may not be very close to you but still you know they are important in, you know, in plays important role in your life in terms of colleagues and other things so 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 we can represent all the people in our uh, network using this uh, exercise or this uh, concentric circles uh, where people some people may be in your inner circle some people may be in your middle circle some people may be in your outer circle uh, depending on the closeness to you so people in convoy represents our social support network these people support us and we support them it is essential that we maintain our convoy throughout the life particularly people in our inner circle so it is very important that we maintain that relationship particularly people in our inner circle plays very important role in our life in giving support during the time of crisis and overall in general also so we all can do a simple exercise uh, using this concentric circles or using this convoy uh, model uh, that for example you know for inner circle you can list people in your inner circle who are very close to you so close that it is hard to imagine your life without them so that is the definition of inner circle so you can list who are people in that circle you can find out how many people are there in the inner circle for middle circle you can list people in your middle circle who are close to you but not as close to people of inner circle so there may be some people in that especially the friends so many friends will be will come in the middle circle so you can list how many people are there in that outer circle you can list people in the outer circle who are less close but still important in your life uh, it may include colleagues and other people you know uh, who may not be very close to you but still they are part of your life so you can list how many people are there so you can kind of do this exercise to find out you know people in your social na- support network and it is important that you know uh, that you have some people in your inner circle so this is very important because they are the first layer of your support network so uh, it need not be too many people a large circle but at least some quality uh, relationships and people in the inner circle is very important so at the end i will just talk about uh, how to build a social support network now we have seen it is so important and it plays so important role in our life so how can kind of build it or maintain it uh, for the benefits of our life for enhancing the quality of your life so building social support is an active process which needs active participation so some suggestion could be like you know one thing is identify and improve the problems in the existing social network so this is very important you know we already have many people in our social network you know many time we don't need more people you know we need better relationship with those people you know so so if there are deficiencies or in the existing relationships you know it is important that you rectify them and improve those relationships so many times uh, our relationships are uh, you know kind of you know the distance is created between uh, the relationship with people but many time it is because of some silly reason some egoistic reason that you know we create distance with people and who are very important in our life uh, for it could be because of some egoistic and silly reason so especially if such reasons are there it is important that you mend those relationships uh, you improve those existing problems in the relationship by looking at the importance that how important they are in your life how, in what ways they have helped you in your life and during the time of crisis these are the people who will come to you and support you so these small issues of egoistic issues and uh, small minor things we should always forget so that you uh, know less judgmental and less egoistic ways of dealing with relationship is very important so if you kind of understand the importance of it lot of uh, deficiencies and problems and conflicts in relationship can be solved sometimes there may be some genuine reason you know conflicts happen we are not talking about those things but many time relationships the soreness in relationship happens primarily because of you know some minor egoistic things which can be avoided so it is important that we mend all these things in the existing relationship so that is very important so identify them improve upon them that is very important second thing is you can build new connections if required you know if you see uh, you know you don't have too many people in your network uh, some of the things uh, <coughs> uh, so before we talk about building new collection in terms of identifying and improving the existing relationship 
uh, one thing is proactively connecting with the people is very important many times even we don't connect with the people who are very close to us uh, simply because you know because of whatever lifestyle reasons and other things uh, so it is important to make efforts to connect with the people be proactive keep in touch with them as much as possible uh, lis uh, listen to them encourage them support them wherever it is required this is how relationships are kind of for flourishes in our life uh, many times we may not have time for that but nowadays because of the you know gift of technology we can kind of connect with any people anywhere in the world so it is much more easier now but face to face connection is always best but if not possible we can use the help of technology to connect with people so these are some of the things that can be done for uh, building new connections so one of the thing is you know uh, kind of follow your interests and you know passions of your life and join participate in groups and communi communities that you like so that is also another important ways of building new connections so you may for example like mountain mountaineering things trekking thing so you can join so many groups and communities where people kind of share ideas and you know do trekking and mountaineering activities so you will find so many like minded people there and you can connect with them so this is one of the, the best ways to kind of uh, build new connections uh, you can also get involved in various altruistic and volunteering activities if you are passionate about something so you can uh, you know, spend time for a cause maybe by joining ngo or doing some helping some organizations uh, whatever orphanage whatever it is so in that way you also kind of when you give love and support to other people help them you also receive and connect with people so look for uh, more opportunities to meet people you know especially if you are in a particular crisis such as you know chronic disease or something cancer or other thing nowadays there are so many even online uh, support groups are there where you can support and find people who are in the similar crisis situations and learn from them so you can connect with uh, so many ways with newer people so uh, these are some of the things and obviously uh, one of the alternative source of support is pets if you don't find too many people you know you can always connect with pets you know have pets in your house if you kind of like pets uh, connect with them play with them you know they also gives lot of lot give lot of emotional support so these are some of the suggestions you know that you can kind of use and um, many people find it difficult to connect with people because of social skill problem so you can enhance your social skill sometime you can take support from professionals also so all these things can be done uh, so the idea is it is not to have a you know large number of people in your support network that is not the idea but it is more important that you know even few people in your inner circle few people who are who can help you support you you know some quality meaningful relationship few people are important that is good enough it could be in your you know workplace it could be in your family it could be in your friend circle few people so that is good enough for getting support network it is not necessary to have a huge and large support network uh, that is there it is okay uh, if it is not there even few people is good enough uh, so these are some of the suggestions so uh, with this uh, I will end today's lecture. Thank you.